Hello ladies and gents, I hope everyone is doing well. This video is going to be about how to build million dollar brands, uh, how to find million dollar products, do all the product research you need for Shopify dropshipping and do it quickly. Um, if you watched my last video, if you haven't watched my last video, uh, a lot of this builds on what I said last video, but just to make it clear, I try to only make these videos when I feel like I have something to say that hasn't been said uh, by the typical YouTubers in this space. Something that can really help you move the needle forward, uh, something that can give yourself that little bit of information. So without further ado, let's get started. A couple things to touch upon is um, the validation here. Um, I started a brand of mine in July and we scaled to 2.2 mil, around 2.1 mil, but there's a couple that's not being att attributed here. Um, and it was sold for 230,000. So in the last video I talk about how I netted around 290 to 300K. You have the sale for 230, that's about half a mil in six months. And I say that to be very clear of what this process should look like for you if you're dedicated, if you're committed to building a brand, to building something long term, and the mindset that you have to have going into this, because it's not just a short term fling passive income thing on the side. It's not like that at all. Um, and I'll get into the things you can do to really do really well. So let's start with the first principles. You all know I love the first principles. I love looking at the building blocks of anything to understand how I can grow that tree. Um, and the roots needed to grow that tree from, right? So let's look at the space of dropshipping or e-commerce. Um, I'm going to specifically look at dropshipping first principles. You have the the approaches that you can take are threefold in my eyes. There's many more, but these are the main three. You have the winning product to a new market. You take what's working in the U.S. and you bring it to Germany. You bring it to Netherlands, France, Singapore, Hong Kong, J Japan, what have you. And that is geo geographical arbitrage, right? You're just, you're basically taking what's working, putting it in another market because that market has not seen that product yet and, and taking advantage of that, uh, that distance in between. And that works quite well. The people who do uh, EU dropshipping are, they're really good at finding the products and then launching them um, and doing quite well on that front. Then you have the winning product with better marketing funnel angle. And this is all just taking a winning product, seeing what they're doing bad with their marketing, what they're doing bad with their angle, what they could fix with their funnel uh, and doing it all better. And this is just a CPA arbitrage, right? You're just trying to get a lower cost back position than them by doing better marketing. In that way, you're going to win the bid on Facebook or whatever uh, marketing platform that you use. Um, and you'll be able to basically just outsell them. Then you have brand building, uh, higher profit margins, more logistical head headaches, uh, higher exit valuations. Typically, you drop some money on an MOQ. This is the traditional way to build a brand. Uh, yes, you can go down this route. If you have more capital, it works better because then you can really invest into product development, the whole nine yards. So maybe if you're just starting out, you don't have that capital, the first two are the way you want to go. Get that win and then go into the brand building and build your uh, your legacy brand. So have you. What are some quick hacks? Um, like I just mentioned, quick hacks to product research. If you want to find something and just pop off quite quickly, take a winning product, go to a new market, take a winning product, try a new angle, take a winning product, try a better creative, a better offer or a better funnel. Okay. And I will go through what this looks like, how you can do it with examples. This, this whole presentation is quite wordy, but I will try to mix it up with some, um, with some visuals. So the winning product to a new market, you can take a winning product, sell to Denmark, Hong Kong, Singapore, Netherlands, Germany, France, UAE. I've, I've actually, the, the order of this is an order of ease. Like it's very easy to take a winning product and go to Denmark because Denmark has only a credit card that you need. Um, I should have also wrote Switzerland. Switzerland is also a really good one. High uh, GDP per capita. Uh, Hong Kong, Singapore, the same. Netherlands, Germany, France, like it's kind of difficult because of the fact that you need PayPal or Klarna, and so you have a certain subsection of the market that doesn't really, that doesn't really, you won't really capture that well until you get those things. And so that's what you would do if you're taking a winning product and new into a new market. Now we have a winning product with a better funnel. Better funnel slash better angle slash different angle or different creative. So let's take skincare as an example. Skincare is notoriously, not notoriously, famously known for to, to be for women, right? But then you have a brand called Lumen, not Lume. I spelled that wrong. Lumen. So let's take a look at Lumen. This is Lumen. So Lumen is for specifically for men. 
and they've taken the skincare game and thrown it at the males and the males are eating it up they love this shit they always loved it they just didn't want to do it um, and it works it works really well so they've taken an angle and just kind of go in another way in another direction and actually in Asia this is quite popular already to wear makeup and skincare uh, but they've kind of introduced this to the West um, and for good reason, they're doing quite well. Their marketing is quite great. So that's the approach of taking a product with a new angle. And I like this as well. So this is a massager. You kind of attach it to your waist. It has heat and it massages. I've seen this ran as a massager. I've seen it ran as a period pain helper. And now right here, it's being ran as a way to sculpt your stomach, which is a little sus. Because I know this shit does not sculpt your stomach. So I would not recommend doing this. Maybe you'll make money in the short term, but you'll get screwed in the long term. Um, but the, the example here is that you can take a single product and have three different angles and do well with these three different angles, right? So that is, the, um, that is taking winning product with a new angle, right? And then you have the compression socks. So compression socks are very known for like older uh, individuals who have issues with circulation, but you can take that and you can sell it to nurses who are on their feet all day or waiters who are on their feet all day. You can take advertorials for health and wellness. So I'll show you this right here. This is a good example. Here you have this brand, Ortho Direct. Let's see what they're doing, how they're approaching their um, whole brand, okay? The first thing that they're doing, once this loads, Okay, the first thing that they're doing is geo-arbitrage. So you can see that all of this is in German. This is a German brand selling to the German market. Okay, and they've got some pretty decent ads, but let's look at what these ads take you to. If you click learn more, you'll see that they take you to an advertorial, and the advertorial is just talking about the product. It's a pre-sale pre -sale page. Um, and they're, they're just trying to increase that conversion rate, trying to increase that average order value. You can click this button and it'll probably take you to a Shopify page. There you go. And it's the Shopify page. Right here, you're, you're primed, you're ready, you're all lubed up to buy. Uh, and that is due to the advertorial. So that is an approach and you'll have people who are selling this product that don't do any of that. They sell to the US, they have a product page straight to go to the product page. There's no advertorial, there's no geo arbitrage. So it's just a different approach, right? And then bundles for relating products, better offer. So, different approach. Don't fall into the trap on losing out on a winning product because you didn't do the fundamentals correctly in the first place. Notice I'm not telling you any product research methods, right? I haven't even talked about any. Why is that? Because it really is not about the method that you use to find products. I can give you four or five methods, but then I would be going against that rule I have, which is not to say the same thing that all the other YouTubers say. They will tell you all every method under the sun, but they won't tell you the fundamentals for understanding how to actually make your product and your brand work, right? What are the fundamentals in this case? Understanding the market is very, very important, right? Um, if you don't understand the market needs, you'll never make an ad, you'll never make a creative, you'll never make a funnel that does well. You have to go into that market. You have to know that consumer. You have to understand what they think about when they wake up. What do they do every day? What are their behaviors? How do they live their life? What products do they use in their life consistently? What do they hate? What do they not hate? Right? What do they love? Things like that. So understand the market needs. With the understanding the market needs, then you can craft the copy on the website, you can craft the creative, you can craft the offer, you can craft the pricing to meet all of those uh, individuals' needs because you know them so well. If you don't do this, you'll have a bad website, bad creative, bad offer, bad pricing. You have all these bad things and you'll just say it's the product that doesn't do well. Uh, giving up easily. After you've done all this and it doesn't work, don't blame the system, move on, try something else, learn from your mistakes. And then don't spend too much time on research, right? This is, goes with a lot of things in life. You will only learn certain lessons by doing the work yourself. So this is a little like surprise, I guess. If you made it this far, surprise. This is a month, uh, maybe three weeks of me just like jotting down brand ideas that interest me. And I thought I would do this for this video because I wanted to show you where my mind goes, what I look at and think to myself, hmm, that would be interesting, okay? So let's go through this type of stuff. Personalized couples jewelry. Why do I like personalized couples jewelry? Because what we're playing on, like what, 
what the emotion here is love. And that is a very strong emotion. And so I can create a brand around love. And I can create a product that actually makes people smile, makes people fall more in love. That's awesome to do. Uh, and I'm sure that I can find many, many ways to make creatives that would absolutely crush because it's such a strong emotion. Dog safety devices, very similar. People love their dogs. Hair soap device, this was just this was just a product I saw. I thought it would be interesting. Never actually did anything about it. Barefoot shoes. So, funny story about barefoot shoes. I ran um, barefoot shoes as a brand. I started a barefoot shoe brand, and it did really well. But ironically is... When I looked at all the brands selling barefoot shoes, they were all not doing well. And so what I did was I did some market research and I found five angles to sell barefoot shoes with, right? And three of them were being advertised already and they weren't working. So I focused on the other two. And one of those two really, really did well. So there is like a good example of had I tried the product in the most stereotypical way, it wouldn't have worked out. But because I did the research, because my fundamentals were in check, it did really well. Um, but I ultimately stopped running that because with barefoot shoes, you get a lot of, it's, it's logistically kind of a headache because you have different sizes and a high return rate and you really have to have a good product. Nootropics for Southeast Asia. So this is a geo arbitrage, right? Taking what's working in the U S bring it to Southeast Asia, hydrogen water, again, uh, re research to back up that claim reality, trans surfing manifestation book. There's a lot of woo woo around like journaling to make things happen. And, uh, I could just see the funnel here, right? Make a book manifestation um, and then be able to uh, send that to influencers on TikTok, make it go viral on TikTok, maybe do some TikTok shop, send them to an Amazon page, retarget with Facebook. So I, I could just see it working quite well. But then you would have to put a lot of effort into making a good journal, right? You would have to get a designer to design it. You would have to probably do an MOQ because it's personalized. That really interests me a lot because I know a lot of people won't go through that work but I will. Uh, athletic Greens for Southeast Asia, mushroom supplementation. I'm not going to run through all these. Uh, I'll kind of go down here. Dad hats, sex chocolate. So I don't write these two down because I want to do the exact same thing. I write them down for the concept, right? Dad hats. We're taking a very broad, but very diehard group of people, dads, and we're giving them a hat specifically for them. How can I take that idea and replicate it across industries? I'm sure there's a way to do that. Sex chocolate, again, same thing. This is a, uh, this is, this went viral on TikTok uh, and the virality nature was because it was sort of a taboo topic about sex and chocolate. You've combined these two things, one that is addictive, that's the chocolate part, and then one that's really like fun to talk about, which is the sex part, and put them together. And then you have sex chocolate. And so that idea could be replicated again. Uh, silicone wedding rings, again, pulling on um, love, grounding sheets, bamboo pajamas, and filtered shower head. So let's go through some of the examples I have here, ladies and gents of brands. So you guys can have a good eye for what I'm looking at. So here is a drop shipping brand. Maybe they hold inventory. I doubt it. Uh, but this is just a clothing brand. All they do is probably research different uh, winning men's clothing. So when I say winning, I mean men's clothing that's trending and doing well. They put it on their site and they test it out with statics. So it's very easy for them to test. Um, just simple stuff, guys. Then we have the sculptor, like I told you about there, just taking another angle, and uh, they're doing at least 100 grand um, a month. So pretty good stuff. This one is a little R-rated, so I won't scroll down, um, but you can kind of see what's peeking through the, the curtains there. It's personalized lingerie, and so, you know, a guy can get this for his girl, a girl can get this for a guy, can get the name on it, baby, and then the guy's like, oh, man. Um... And this does really well. Personalized things do really, really well. And you can see this doing well on TikTok. So kind of a cool idea. Uh, not something I would ever do. Aura form. So grounding sheets. This is the, uh, the sheets that come with an uh, electrical circuit you can plug in. So it grounds you to the earth. It recharges your energy. A certain subsector of the market would be very interested in this. So I thought it was a very cool idea. Try it risk-free for 30 nights. Just a cool idea overall. Very unique. Something I would, I would love to dabble in. Better mouth tape, so this is cool, just mouth tape, uh, because that's a trend, right, growing, that, which is breathing through your nose when you sleep, and uh, they've done a good job here. This is a subscription-based service, because I don't know how this would work at a, as a one-time purchase. They probably break even on a one-time purchase, depending on when they, where they advertise. But then they get the recurring customer with the LTV that's quite high. 
the barefoot shoes they've uh, appeared and I wanted to show you this because this is a UK brand but you can see what they're doing here and uh, they're selling the barefoot shoes how are they selling it let's actually dive a little deeper here so we can show this all barefoot shoes um, this is cool man they've really taken this and ran with it so this is a legit brand it's very cool to see what they're doing here um, and this is what I was talking about earlier guys and then you have the, these just dress shoes right simple dress shoes affordable for men easy to buy all right I'm gonna end this really soon first principles about um, product research overall broad market appeal understanding the TAM of your market right how big is it if you're going niche how big is that market well, who's in the market already margin do you have enough uh, margin to run paid ads if you don't where are you gonna get that margin what is the cost per acquisition what is the cost of ship the cost of store the cost of pick and pack the cost of goods know your numbers Creative production, how easy is it to make creatives? Because you're going to have to make a lot and you're going to have to make them well. Proof of velocity, can you already see this growing without you in the market? That means that you're joining a growing market. That's a great idea. Market dynamics, right? This is just basically market research and then anti-saturation. Looking at a market, a lot of people, if it's very saturated, will think, um, man, I, I, can't, I can't do well. There's too many competitors there. Um, there are markets that are anti-saturation. Another word for this is there's markets that are evergreen. They'll always be around. They'll always sell well. Do those. Stick to those. And then validation. Once you have an idea, you go in and validate it. Shop Hunter. Put in a competitor. See the actual sales volume. Google Shopping. Google Trends. Amazon. Go to Amazon. Look at the reviews. Look at the negative reviews. See what people are complaining about. Make some edits on your brand to stick out. Reddit forums uh, and Timu. And then last but not least, good old, put your money where your mouth is and see what sticks. Thank you guys, and I'll see you next time.